And our Major Garrett is in South Bend, Indiana, joins us now. Major, uh, the polls and the crowds and really the momentum surrounding all of it now does seem to be moving in Donald Trump's direction despite the many gambits we've seen from Ted Cruz over the last week plus. Is that a, a sense of yours there on the ground today? Yes, absolutely. You feel crowd sizes certainly in Trump's category. You see the frenetic pace of the Cruz campaign deploying surrogates and Cruz. Cruz made five stops. His wife and Carly Fiorina, the presumptive running mate, made another five, so 10 stops in Indiana. Cruz will be in the state today campaigning, trying to find votes wherever he can. That kind of pace suggests that they really do believe that the poll numbers have shifted against them and they've got to look for votes wherever they can. And it's important to point out and sort of parse some of this language. Josh, yesterday, Cruz said over and over again, this race is effectively tied. Well, that's an interesting linguistic construct. Effectively tied is not the same thing as tied, as his, that is to say, Cruz advisors I spoke with yesterday readily conceded. Effectively tied is a very elastic sort of thing. You could be within six, eight points and say, well, if you look at it a certain way, it's effectively tied. No, they know it's not tied any longer. And the tide, if you will, is moving in Trump's direction. Here in South Bend last night, he drew easily 4,000 to the main hall where his event was at 6 o'clock local time, about 6.30. He had two overflow rooms. People stood in line easily three and a half to four hours before that thing even started. And South Bend is interesting because northern Indiana is where Cruz believes he has his strongest support in this state. So Trump strategically went into what the Cruz campaign believes and the Trump campaign believes is the Cruz stronghold to try to pull votes away in pursuit of not just a statewide victory, but denying Cruz congressional district wins, which would allow him to extract some delegates. So the Trump campaign is going for a clean sweep here, not only a statewide victory, but sweeping all 57 delegates if it can. I'm not sure it can, but it's going to try. Meanwhile, we saw some Trump supporters uh, draw Ted Cruz into an exchange yesterday that seemed, if not bizarre, uh, certainly notable. Uh, as uh, we're seeing some uh, video of it now, Ted Cruz extending his hand uh, to shake hands of supporters who then, again, drew him into an exchange that uh, has been oft watched in the last 24 hours. What did you make of it? So I would not classify it in any way, shape, or form as bizarre. Ted Cruz sought this out. This was a strategic political move on his part. Look, Cruz has got to elevate himself and get himself in the conversation in whatever way he can, and even if that means taking some risks and going into the quote-unquote metaphorical lion's den of a bunch of Trump supporters. I mean, Cruz saw them, walked over to engage them, and wanted to do two things, maintain his cool, engage them on the issues and see how they would react for these reasons he wanted his supporters to see and be reminded why they support cruz because generally speaking they believe he does keep his cool has a contrasting temperament and personality to donald trump and is more rigorously aligned with them on the issues they care about broadly defined as conservative republicans so cruz wanted that interaction he took the risk that it wouldn't necessarily go well. He probably was certain walking over there. He wouldn't convince anyone, but he wanted to elevate his own visibility and his own approach to campaigning face to face. And I can tell you last night, and based on the rally of the last one that Cruz had last evening, he was already trying to turn it to his advantage. So I don't consider that bizarre at all. I consider that tactical politics of a high risk nature when you are in a desperate situation and you've got to amp up your visibility and increase that visibility and try to give your supporters something to cling on to and those who are still undecided something to look at and may view you in a different and more positive light. To those who may be more decided, if what comes to pass, if, if what the polls suggest <clears throat> will happen there today comes to pass, uh, what might we then expect of the Republican establishment, which has been thus far rather lukewarm to warm to Donald Trump, uh, but what might we see uh, in the days uh, beginning tomorrow uh, in terms of right. endorsements and coalescing around him? Well, let's try to define establishment. It's sort of a manufactured term that doesn't mean all that much. Who is the establishment? Let's just talk about members of Congress, elected Republicans who represent a House district or have a Senate seat. For a long time, I would say for the better part of two months, they have looked on in either hesitation, reservation, 
or resignation about what Trump was doing. And now they're going to have to decide very quickly, are you with Trump or are you against him? Because after tonight, if Trump wins and wins decisively, his hold on the Republican nomination will be virtually unbreakable, barring some other very unexpected event. So these members of Congress, I won't call them the establishment, they just are Republicans of note who represent, in a house, case of a House district, some 700,000 constituents. And if they're a member of the United States Senate, they have standing of their own. Are going to have to decide, do you come close to Trump? Do you begin to open up a, lot, a dialogue that can make it easier for you to eventually endorse? Or do you say, you know what? This may be the will of the voters, but I cannot abide it. And a lot of members of Congress I've had the chance to either talk to by phone, email, text with over the last couple of days, say this is a process that is going to have to begin and members are going to have to decide. They've been allowed to sit on the sidelines for a while, waiting to see what will happen. Well, now, if Trump wins tonight, they're going to know in all likelihood what's going to happen and they're going to have to decide. And my sense from these conversations is a surprising number will find themselves landing with Trump and say, he's the party nominee, I'm a member of the party in good standing, and if that's what the voters want, that's where I'll be, and I'll try to work with Trump and try to shape his general election message, and if he becomes president, shape his administration in a way that I can live with, which I think you're going to see a lot of more Republicans move in that direction, maybe not instantaneously, but gradually and with some look to their own political futures because if they decide it's more harmful to them to oppose Trump than to be with him, they'll be with him. Something certainly to watch here in the next 24 hours. Major Garrett there in South Bend, Indiana. Thank you. You got it.